Welcome to the TPC Desktop video series. In this video, we're going to look at initiating COGO routines and other routines in Traverse PC from a Traverse. In most of these cases, Traverse PC gets the direction type and the distance type it's going to use in that routine from the Traverse. But let me start with a very simple example, and then let's work to a more complex one. In this survey, we've set the project factors to ground distance for the distance type and grid bearing for the direction type. We put in our project elevation of 10,000 feet just so we can see the difference um, between a grid computation and a ground computation. And let's go ahead and OK that. And let's just come up and choose a random inverse. I don't have a traverse involved in this, so traverse PC is going to open the random inverse dialog and it's going to be set to grid bearing and ground distance, the factors for the survey. So if I initiate a routine from the desktop, uh, for the most part, it initiates it using the distance type and direction type from the survey. Now let's do that a little differently this time. Let's go into um, a traverse that is based on grid bearing and grid distance. So we've set this traverse independent of the survey. Maybe we had uh, some information, we pulled up a record that we knew was based on grid. So we've entered it that way in this traverse. And if I were to do a random inverse from this traverse, let's use the same button for random inverse, Traverse PC initiates the random inverse using grid bearing and grid distance because that's the distance type of the traverse. Let's do the same thing now with a traverse in ground distance. So here we have a similar traverse, pretty much the same alignment, but we've set this traverse to grid bearing in ground distance at project elevation of 10,000 feet. So let's select two points again, like we did earlier. Let's bring up the random inverse and we see that this random inverse is going to give us grid bearing and ground distance now. The traverse determined the format of the dialog. Now with any of these dialogs, we could certainly come in and change them. So I can put this back to a grid distance and we can see that that distance changes that it computes there. But initially the dialogs get their uh, distance type and direction type from the traverse. What's the benefit of that? The benefit is that depending on what kind of record survey information you're accessing, you may not have the luxury of all of the data being based on ground distances or all the data being based on grid distances. Oftentimes we find the records don't specify or we can dig down a little bit and realize, oh, they did this based on grid, not on ground, and I need to work with ground. So it allows us to mix and match a little bit and handle those real world situations that we uh, find ourselves in as we go through the record survey data. Now let's expand this into legal descriptions and let's see how the same thing applies. I'm going to just open up this report view and make sure it's clear. So I want you to see what we're adding here. Let's start with the traverse that's based on grid bearing and grid distance. Let's write a legal description for this traverse. I'm not going to change any settings. Let's just choose OK. And look what Traverse BC did. It added a legal description for the legal at grid traverse, and it tells us that these are grid distances and grid bearings. So when we read the line in the legal description that says thence north 90 degrees east for 100 feet, those are grid distance feet. Now let's click on the other traverse based on ground distance, and let's do the same thing. Tools, legal description report, and OK. Now let's look at this report. So here's our original grid report. Now let's look at our ground report. Now it says legal description for the legal at ground traverse, and it tells us that this report is going to use ground distance. So when we read a line, we read thence 90, north 90 degrees east for 100 units of ground distance. Now both of these traverses have been computed independently of each other. So the distances along the alignment are going to be the same bearings along the alignment are going to be the same. What's going to be different are the coordinates. And in fact, if we look really quickly at the coordinates of 17 based on a ground distance alignment, we see they're not the same coordinates as the grid coordinates uh, where we base the alignment on grid distances. So let's close these out and let's just recap real quickly what Traverse PC does here. First, Traverse PC 
opens Kogo dialogs and other routines from the desktop using the surveys project factors or the surveys distance and direction type. So if I'm working in geodetic or ground distance or grid distance, the routines will always open up with those distance and direction types. This, however, can be overridden when I open a routine from a traverse. In that case, the routine gets its distance and direction type from that traverse. So the routine matches the traverse data. If we just keep this sequence or hierarchy um, in mind, we won't have any confusion about what distance and direction type we're using. And if we're, we're ever just not quite sure, just open up one of these routines and look right at the top. Grid bearing, grid distance, or bring up the report, and Traverse BC will tell you exactly which one it was using in that routine 